Hello, hello, hello. Solutions to problem 98. It deals with a glass bowl. I discuss in great detail in lecture 22 of 803 a glass bowl. To be able to answer the question what is the radius of this glass bow, then the index of refraction for the red light is 1.630. And what then is the radius for the blue color of the glass bow, which has an index of refraction 1.645. So once you know the two radii, the red one is larger than the blue, you know the width of the bow. And I believe that's one of the questions too. So for starters, you need a full understanding of how a rainbow is formed. Those are also spherical, transparent beads, drops in the case of rainbow, in the case of glass bows, beads in the case of plastic. Oh, I believe <laughs> I call these plastic, but that's a different story. As long as it is transparent and spherical. I advise you strongly to look over any one of my rainbow lectures. There are at least five on my channel, but I suggest you use lecture 22 of 803. So here is one drop. The sun is in this direction, so light from the sun is coming in this direction. That doesn't mean that the light is coming from the horizon, of course. It's just my drawing. You can rotate this whole thing and then the sun is there. So the light of the sun comes from the left. The angle of incidence I call I at point A. So at point A, some of that light is reflected and some of it is refracted into the water. This angle is R, angle of refraction, I is angle of incidence. Snell's law says sine I is N sine R and N is the index of refraction which differs for the red and the blue. The light goes into the water drop. At point B, two things happen. Some of the light comes out, refracts back into the air, and some of the light reflects into the water drop. How much goes out here and how much goes in, how much goes out and how much goes in is irrelevant. It can be calculated with the Fresnel equation, but it's not part of this problem. So now at B, light reflects, and at C, some of the light is reflected. You see here a teeny weeny little bit, and some of the light comes out. And that is the light that we are dealing with. Clearly this angle must be R, Snell's law. At reflection, Angle of incidence is angle of refraction. This is therefore also R. This must be R. And this must also be R. And right here, in the transition back into air, N sine R is sine I. Therefore, this angle I is the same as that angle I. Regardless of what the angle I is, because you can make I zero, this I is zero. This eye is a little larger, and this eye is even larger. Regardless of the angle I, it is simple high school algebra to calculate what this angle phi is, where the light comes out of the raindrop at C relative to the incoming. That light is phi. I will not do that here. It's totally trivial, but I mentioned it in all my lectures. That angle phi is 4r minus 2i. 
Why are there raindrops? Why are there colored bows, I should say? Well, if you change the angle I, you will find that at first phi increases, in go, up go, increasing angle of I, phi will increase, then phi will reach a maximum, after which it goes down. And it is right at that point where the colors occur. In other words, if you want to calculate what the relation is between i and phi in terms of that maximum value for phi, you will have to calculate d phi di. Yeah, d phi di will give you a minimum or a maximum. In this case, it will be a maximum. How now do we calculate d phi di? I will go to my blackboard at home and I will discuss that, how we can calculate d phi di. It's algebraically a little bit of a nightmare and it is one of my problems in 803, so you can cheat and you can <laughs> look it up. So for now I will end this and we'll go to my blackboard and we will do a little bit of math there. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's now finish problem 98. Sin i equals n sin r. High school physics, I will not elaborate on that anymore. In the case of the light that penetrates a transparent bead, reflects at the back and then comes out of it in front, there is a change in the direction of that light and I have called that change angle phi. And it is trivial to prove, if you're not lazy, that phi is 4r minus 2i. So i is the angle of incidence, r is the angle of refraction. Now comes the issue. If you increase i from 0 to higher and higher values, you will see that phi also increases. Let's take i is 0. If i is 0, then r is also 0. <laughs> so this is 0 and this is 0. So when i is 0, phi is 0. Now make i 5 degrees and I make it 10 degrees and keep doing that every time you calculate r using Snell's law and now you're going to make a plot of phi versus i. You will see then that there comes a time that phi no longer increases, but if you increase i any further, that phi will decrease. That is the situation where the colors show up. That is essential for the rainbow, essential for the glass bow, and in our case, essential for our plastic bow. All right. So what we have to find we have to find the maximum of phi in a phi i curve. So that means d phi d i has to be zero. Brush up on you <laughs> on your math. d phi d i must be zero. That is a bit of a headache. I will admit that to you. And I'm not going to derive it here for you, because in problem 10-4, of 803, I derive many, many steps, not just one, but maybe 10 different steps, that the phi di is zero, that this i is then the angle for which phi is a maximum. Cosine square i 
is n squared minus 1 divided by 3. So once you accept this, the problem is effectively done. We take the index of refraction for red light for our plastic. So you substitute in here this n, and you find the cosine of i, so you find i. So i is this number. Then you do the same for blue light, and then you find i is this number. So now if you want to know what phi is at that angle of i, then it is 4r minus 2i. And you find r very easily because you use Snell's law and this value for i to calculate r. So the rest is peanuts. So you'll find then that phi for the red light is 12.947 degrees and for blue light it is 12.018 degrees. If you have that answer, you deserve a hundred. However, there is an issue that I have may not have raised in my lecture 803, my lecture 22, where I covered this. And that is that the sun has an angular size in the sky of half a degree. So it is not so easy to say the radius at the blue is a number like this, which is ridiculously high precision, because it will wash out a little bit, perhaps over as much as two tenths of a degree, because of the finite size of the sun. But of course, these are the numbers that I want, and as far as the width of the bow is concerned, yeah, you can take the difference between these two numbers, give you about one degree, but again, that one degree is not a realistic number because of the finite side of the sun. It's probably a little more. How does this compare now with our rainbows? Well, our rainbows, the index of refractions were 1.331 for red light. And if you march this through, the, uh, through these equations, you will find then that phi for red light is 42 degrees. Imagine 42 degrees compared to 12.9 degrees in the case of this value. In other words, the angle phi, which is the radius of angular radius of these colored bows, is extremely sensitive to the index of refraction. In the case of Water, where my red light is about 1.331, and I believe blue light uh, is maybe 1.343 or so. There you get angled close to 42 degrees for the radii. In problem 22 of 803, I believe I used glass, which has an index of refraction of 1.5. So 1.3c, 1.5 is in between the 1.63 and the 1.33. And so there the radius of that glass bow I believe was 28 degrees, substantially smaller than 42. And now that we make the index of refraction even higher, it is even lower. Imagine a colored bow with an angular radius of about 13 degrees. Well, it's an imaginary plastic. I'm not even sure that plastics exist with this index of refraction. All I wanted you to test whether you have a complete understanding of how to calculate the angle i at which phi is a maximum. That means how you calculate this. Once you do that, the rest is trivial. Then out pops the radii. Okay. We'll leave it with that. Today is November, I think, 30. We're going to post this right away. And maybe with a little bit of luck, I will also post the solutions to problem 99. So, have a nice day. Take care. And yes, of course, we'll be friends. That is always a given. Um, I recall that about maybe 5%, one, yeah, 5%
of my viewers had the correct answers, which would be these answers. So it was clearly not a very easy problem because you didn't spend the time to watch lecture 22 of 803 and you didn't spend the time <laughs> to look at problem 10.4 where it's all there. So it goes. By the way, all my problems and solutions are on my channel. You have to learn how to find them. <laughs>